step to honor Prabhakar Garu with the Lifetime Achievement Award, APSA 2023. Let's go through his journey, how it started, what his efforts are, and where not just Nuji we do, but the entire seed industry is with us. So I request the console to please play the biopic on Sri Prabhakar Rao Garu. India at present has been recognized and admired across the world as the most farmer-friendly and food-friendly country. Many companies have been credited for making this a reality over the years. But of these many companies, Nuzi Vidu Seeds Limited, which has emerged as the largest seed company in the country, strikingly stands out as the most farmer-friendly, helping them in a myriad ways to improve their lot. The leader and visionary behind this successful organization is none other than Mr. Mandava Prabhakar Rao, who has been hailed as a trailblazer in the agribusiness industry for his innovative and stupendous contributions over the years. Mr. Prabhakar Rao is a known genius, as seen from the many accolades and rewards that were conferred upon him time and again. He is an alumnus of the prestigious Banaras Hindu University, from where he had scintillating academic accomplishments. He not only ranked second in the university in BSc Agriculture, but also the university topper in MSc Agriculture. He was also the recipient of the gold medal during his PG studies. Though he had a flair to join civil services thereafter, his better counsel coaxed him to go back to his roots and take over the baton from his illustrious father, who already established a seed company way back in 1973 in Tukuluru village near Nuzividu in Andhra Pradesh, though in a small way. From the time he took over the reins of the company in the year 1983, there has been no looking back till it was made to emerge as the numero uno seed company in the country. Through his sheer grit and determination, Aided by his vision, passion, and innovative ideas, by 2010, Nuzi Vidu Seeds Limited became the largest hybrid seed company in India and the first domestic company to achieve a revenue of 1,000 crore rupees. The company is a pioneer in development of cotton, rice, corn, wheat, mustard, chili varieties, which help farmers earn higher income due to their yields, superior quality and pest or disease tolerances. Not limiting his appetite to this first love, that is seeds, he has also forayed into other domains like sugar, textiles, cotton, renewable energy and also IT infrastructure in a big way and is striving and aiming to achieve respectable status in these varied fields as well. What is particularly noteworthy is his unique experiment to develop and implement the concept of an integrated cotton value chain based seed to fabric model through his textile and cotton verticals. Today, thanks to all that he personifies and stands for, NSL Group has evolved into a 5,000 crore group in the agri and allied products domain. Mr. Rao has been instrumental in leading industry wide advocacy initiatives for the benefit of small and medium seed producers and farmers of the country, leading to reforms by government in seed regulation and process improvements in the seed industry. Further, he has conceptualized, designed and developed many other R&D and business transformation programs leading to the benefit of the farmer fraternity. The High Density Planting System or HDPS Agronomy in Cotton and Direct Sown Rice Agronomy Program which was strongly advocated by Mr. Rao, reaffirms his commitment to improvement of productivity and profitability of farmers and the vision of achieving SDGs through sustainable and regenerative agronomic practices. Thanks to his vision and leadership abilities, Mr. Rao has been unanimously elected for the position of President of National Seeds Association of India or NSAI which position he has been holding for the last 10 years. A never stop and never give up attitude of Mr. Rao always pushes him to boundaries and challenges that are turned into opportunities for him. 
On the other hand, his ideologies of putting a developed society in place has been the driving force behind the successful implementation of the corporate social responsibility initiatives. Today, India looks forward to many such pioneers who are exemplary and who stand out with their unwavering commitment and guiding leadership as that of Mr. Mandava Prabhakar Rao so that the nation reaches its zenith in terms of achieving much higher goals in future on par with any developed country. What a journey, what a journey. In few minutes, we can see how he has achieved the pinnacles in this industry and beyond. So with that, we have the honor of bestowing the Lifetime Achievement Award on Sri Prabhakar Garu. So sir, please join. I am so delighted to that to celebrate this evening, Mr. Prabhakar Rao's wife, his parents, and two cute granddaughters are here to, you know, to celebrate this evening. So let's start the honors, please. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give the gentlemen, a big, big round of applause. Shri M. Prabhakar Rao Daru, Chairman NSL Group. And I just would like, love to say at this point in time that achievement is largely the product of steadily raising one's level of aspiration as well as expectation. And we did see that has been the emerging, um, you know, those have been the, the factors that have literally, literally driven him all his life. Thank you very much. Shri Prabhakar Rao Garu for the kind of service that you have been providing. This outstanding honor, so we request uh, Prabhakar Garu to please deliver his Lifetime Achievement Award APSA 2023 acceptance speech. It's all yours. <clears throat> Respected uh, and honorable Agriculture Minister of the State uh, Telangana, Sri Singaretti Narendra Redgaru, very distinguished agro industry stalwarts and leaders, agriculture fraternity, the jury members, friends, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you from the bottom of my heart for presenting this award and also for all of you for participating in this function. It had been a very great, fulfilling journey all through <clears throat> my life so far. And I feel that I'm learning every day and continue to learn in the future and continue the travel. I chose to pursue the agriculture uh, as I got exposed to commercial agriculture and seed production very early in my life because my grandparents were farmers and my father used to have a large agriculture and seed production operation which I used to participate while going to school. <clears throat> Interestingly, I also had uh, worked on a farm for a year before joining Agriculture BSc. So that led to a great foundation of practicing agriculture directly, made me understand many nuances and issues related to the field. 
Once I joined agriculture, I had uh, improved my academic performance because this was subject of my interest. And uh, therefore, I could academically make a very good progress in uh, agriculture, achieving a gold medal in my post-graduation. Since I did well in agriculture, I also tried my luck in civil services. And uh, that helped in broadening my horizon, going beyond the field of agriculture and understanding many aspects that are important in life <coughs> and, and the career. I joined uh, my company about 40 years ago. 1983 is when I completed my MSc AG and joined the business. And in this 40 years, by focusing on research and development, the quality assurance to ensure uh, high quality seed supply to the farmers and also scaling up of the excellent varieties that we could develop in the R&D and focusing on these aspects, we could rapidly become the largest seed company and perhaps the first company in India to cross the 1000 crore turnover. We could also adopt the new trends in agriculture like um, the BT cotton trades, incorporating the BT cotton trades into our varieties and adopt the technological enhancement, the information technology and communication technology so to grow our business and take it to the nooks and corners of the country. Though we started as a cotton seed company, uh, we diversified into other important crops like rice, corn, wheat, uh, millet, mustard, jute, etc. So today we are very well diversified and serving several parts of the country because of such diversification. We are one of the first country to go outside of the hybrids because we saw an opportunity and a need for serving the rice variety farmers also and we started breeding new varieties of rice though there was very little protection that is available to the IP rights that exist in OP rice. But this trend, what we started now became uh, followed by the entire industry. There are many big companies today developing new rice varieties and producing seeds and supplying to the farmers. Similarly, jute, we, more recently we started uh, developing jute varieties through our research and we could provide new jute varieties to farmers which were providing almost 20 to 25 percent high yields compared to the varieties that are available for the past 30 years. It will be interesting to some of you to know that there is no new variety available in jute for more than 20 years. And when we came up with a new variety, the farmers really liked it and uh, there is a large scale rapid growth that is happening even in a crop like jute. <coughs> The, some of the high points that I could uh, talk about and share with you in my 40 years of experience are development of long staple high yielding cotton hybrids. The, one of the hybrids that we developed early in, in my career which is named as Bunny that became the benchmark for yield and also quality. So it, we could combine both aspects together which was a great achievement those days and which transformed the uh, requirements of the textile industry. And that hybrid, because of its benefit to the farmer, economic benefit to the farmer, they were getting higher price and also getting higher yield. So it became the biggest success in the cotton seed uh, sector. And pro probably the record is still uh, maintained by that hybrid. Similarly, the varietal rice development, what we took up, this also I think is a great success. Today we have varieties which can solve many problems. For example, sir, Telangana had a major problem of procurement. We have developed a new variety of rice which was tested last three years. And this, this fetches the highest price because it, it, it grains are of very high quality. The, uh, the rice that is being produced by the farmers is now procured by the industry at uh, 2,300 rupees per 70 kg bag, which is more than 3,000 rupees a quintal. So this removes the necessity for the FCI procurement and this such kind of a rice can be exported to other countries also besides meeting our local market requirements. 
So that kind of achievements we could do in our breeding program. We also developed a Basmati hybrid in our company, which is really um, giving more than 20% yield advantage compared to the varieties which are grown by the farmers. We came up with uh, development of seed treatment machines for the first time in our, in, uh, in our country, which transformed the entire seed treatment processes now. Almost the industry standard has now been, um, been reached because of our development. We developed Ravi corn hybrids, which are yielding more than 50, uh, 50 uh, quintals per acre. This is a 45 quintals used to be the benchmark, but last two years we have been supplying a hybrid, which is giving more than 50 quintals yield per acre. We propagated the concept of direct sown rice in Guntur district of Andhra Pradesh, which I feel will be great potential across the country and across even Telangana. I'm happy to see the spread of DSR now in Nalgonda district, part of Nalgonda district, which I'm sure will also go to other districts very soon. Similarly, we are promoting HDP cotton, uh, high density planting of cotton. The country needs more cotton compared to what we are growing now. And we are running short of cotton in the past five, six years because of rapid growth of textile industry and stagnation of the cotton yields. So we came up with this concept and we are breeding new hybrids which can fit into high density planting. And uh, if these, these systems are adopted by the farmers for which now government also is uh, supporting, I'm sure that cotton production can double and also cotton can contribute towards oil seed, uh, edible oil improvement because two thirds of cotton that is produced contributes to edible oil seed production. Similarly, the jute variety about which I told, this is another contribution that we have made. <clears throat> With all these improvements in the crop improvement and in the economic improvements which the company is doing, I'm sure our company will not only be, become an important part of company for meeting the seed requirements of India, but also we are likely to become, uh, grow beyond our country boundaries also. I see uh, a great future for Indian agriculture, um, though we, are, we have to focus more on sustainability and uh, work towards climate smart varieties and economies to help the farmers. Um, we have to move towards regenerative agriculture. And all these things, though they sound difficult, today uh, it is very much possible for us to think and achieve them because of the technological advancements that the country has made in information technology as well as communication technology. The remote sensing and uh, the use of biologicals so to replace chemicals and uh, the propagation of millets. So all these aspects I see they, are, uh, they give a great hope for the country and great future for the country. The, there is another concept, uh, another problem that most of us discuss in many of the seminars like this, the participation of youth in agriculture. We, some of us are worried about youth not coming into agriculture and taking, pa participate in, uh, and taking part in agriculture. But the spread of technology, the technologies like drones, um, mechanization, to suit the Indian kind of a, a land holdings. So, and uh, the uh, connection of the consumer to the farmer. Today, um, the farm produce that is produced by the farmer fetches very low price to the farmer, whereas the consumer pays very high price for the same produce. With the use of information technology, I am sure that in future, a lot of avenues will get opened for the youth to come into agriculture in taking the farm produce to the consumer and in the process benefiting the farmer as well as the consumer also. So similarly, the knowledge that is coming into agriculture in future to reduce the chemicals about which we discussed, some of the panelists also were talking about reducing the fertilizer by 50% and uh, improving the productivity by about 70 to 80%. All these things require more knowledge flow into agriculture. This also opens up a lot of avenues for the youth. And by propagating these avenues, you can bring more youth to come and participate in agriculture and create a very good vocation for themselves and also benefit in the process, the farmers and consumers. And uh, on the personal front, as I mentioned in the very beginning of my Thanksgiving speech, that I am very grateful uh, to the sector, agriculture sector, to all the stakeholders who worked in the sector for giving me this great opportunity of 
creating a, a career and creating a company out of this uh, out of this business and uh, having crossed 62 now i have plans to stabilize after stabilizing the operations of the company in giving trying to give back what best i can do for the sector and uh, i also have been uh, regularly contributing uh, to the industry affairs by uh, during my tenure as the president of the national seed association and even before that when i was the president of the state seedman association so constantly i have been trying to do my best the industry has got a great future there are strong companies that have developed in our in our industry as you all know the seed industry is one industry where there is a global competition much before india opened up um, in terms of economic reforms so in spite of such competition from all the global companies our industry is able to grow and sustain because of very smart minds which are working in this industry and because of very good policy reforms that have been coming uh, from the government to support the industry and telangana state for that matter is one of the best states which created a very conducive environment for the growth of the seed industry in this state and also from this state the industry is able to serve the whole country and i'm sure going forward in the future industry will also spread outside of uh, the country and cater to the needs of the farmers across the globe i thank i thanks uh, i thank once again mr raj agarwal um, for uh, choosing me to confer this award and uh, i wish him all good luck in his endeavors thank you very much and namaskar to all of you thank you thank you so very much